Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode, where in this video we're going to learn what a refresh token is, why they're needed, where to store them, and how they're different from regular access tokens. So first, what is a refresh token? So when a user logs in with their credentials to a website that uses token authorization, they will most likely receive two tokens, an access token and a refresh token. The access token is used to identify and authorize the user in subsequent requests. The refresh token is used to obtain a new access token when the access token expires. So for example here, you would log in with your credentials, say a username and password, you would be returned an access and refresh token. These, are most, these could be returned in multiple ways, but a common one is to return them in cookies. Next, to access some protected resources, you send this access token. So for example, say you want to get some profile information that's a protected route, you would send the access token in the request headers. Same with if you want to get a list of friends and users and you would not send the refresh token in this request, just the access token. And you would get the protected resources in return. But now, let's say you make these same calls again, but the access token has expired. This would cause a 401 to be returned, or basically saying you're unauthorized. And this would say that we need to use the refresh token to get a new access token. So essentially, the client could get back a 401, and they would see this, and then they would make a call to a, to a route such as dash refresh, using the refresh token to get a new access token. And now when this new access token is returned, they can use it to get the protected resources once more. There are multiple ways to do this, but a common one is to use a silent refresh or a silent login, where essentially the user doesn't know about it, but if they get back a 401, the request, a request is made to get a new access token, and then the request that was originally denied is made again. But so this is great and all, but why do we actually need refresh tokens? Well, so access tokens are bearer tokens, which means that whoever has the token can use it. Therefore, if the access token is stolen, then the attacker can impersonate the user for as long as that token is valid. And to combat this, access tokens are given a short lifespan so that if it's stolen, the attacker only has access for the lifespan of the token. However, because access tokens have a short lifespan, we need a way to get a new access token without prompting the user to log back in with their credentials each time it expires. So say if the access token expired and we made a request to get these protected resources and we got a 401, imagine if each time we did that the user had to log back in. This would lead to a terrible user experience. But so this is what refresh tokens can do for us. Once the access token is expired, the refresh token will be used to get a new one. And of course, our access token can be restolen, but so can the refresh token. And if the refresh token is stolen, then the attacker can obtain access tokens freely. However, the key difference is that refresh tokens can be revoked while access tokens cannot. If a refresh token is stolen, it can be revoked and the user can be made to log back in with their credentials to retrieve a new one. Furthermore, refresh tokens are a lot less likely to be stolen as they're sent over the wire much less than access tokens. Refresh tokens are only used when the user needs a new access token. Access tokens are sent with every request to get a protected resource. And programmatically, a way to do this is by storing both the refresh token and access token in HTTP cookies, but setting the path for the refresh token cookie to only be the location of the refresh route. So in other words, there would be only one route where the refresh token is sent over the wire. And now let's talk about storing refresh tokens. So refresh tokens are stored on the client, but they also need to be stored on the server. This is so they can be invalidated if they are believed to have been compromised. For example, say a refresh token is being sent from a different IP address than it normally is, the account this refresh token belongs to can be prompted through email or SMS asking if it is them or asking them to verify themselves. So not sure if, for example, you log into your Google account abroad or in a different country, you might be required to log back in again. If you said that this wasn't you, then most likely a refresh token would be revoked. So for example, say they get an email or SMS asking if this is them or asking to authenticate themselves. If they say it's not, we would need to look up the refresh token associated with that user and remove it. As for ways to store the refresh token, it could be stored in memory with Redis or a hash of the refresh token could be stored inside a database. Both would be linked to a user ID. And once again, remember, because refresh tokens have a really long lifespan, we would want to have a way to invalidate it as the token would be available for quite a long time, as opposed to the access token that's available for, say, an hour or something like that. But so this is my video on refresh tokens. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing. If you want to support me, please check out my Chrome extension called Witscepter in the description. 
But besides that, thank you and have a good one.